It's Jenny from Harmony Hills Home and Garden, and Lulu is here with us today too. Today we're going to talk about how I keep track of things in my garden, the different ways I keep my records, and I'm going to share with you two of my favorite books that help me keep track of the plants that I plant, the seeds that I start, and different things happening in the yard. Okay, you can get down. Okay, so um, when you have a yard um, that's got more than one little gardening area in it and um, you're there for a few years, it is helpful to write things down so that you can remember from year to year what, um, what's happening in your garden. So a few years ago, I started writing things down in just a spiral notebook. This is just something I picked up. I think I got this one at Target. It's just a spiral notebook with um, paper in it and I have kept a lot of notes here. I started this particular one when we moved into this house in the fall of 2015. And so in the spring of 2016 is when I started really writing things down. Now in here you can see I've got hand-drawn garden layouts with little indicators and, and symbols and this is the plant list of the things that's in this section of the garden. And I've done that uh, for a lot of the different areas in the yard. So each of these drawings, they're really not to scale um, and they're really just, um, you know, your fifth grader could do this for you. Um, but I tried to keep track of the shape of the bed compared to the house and what plants are where. I kept a list going over here of what got planted in this area. You see different colors from different days and different seasons that I've um, done things. And so this is the primary way that I keep track of what I have. Here's an example of, um, <laughs> this is the drawing for the side yard over on the north side of the house with, this, uh, with the side porch. It is a mess. It's got all kinds of stuff all over there. It's a really large garden that I tried to represent on a small page, which meant that all of my plants are represented really tiny little circles. And then I have this list of what the plants are over here and the, uh, the list ran out of space on the page so I had to tape another piece of paper on top of it. So you can see, I mean, this is nothing professional. This is nothing high, high cost or, or, or really all that complicated. It's just a matter of writing things down and doing your best to keep track. So, um, so then the other part of my garden journal that I have in here is just, I keep it like a diary so like here, this says Friday, April 22nd, I had 12 cubic yards of double shredded mulch delivered from Blue Moon Farm. And then on Monday, April 25th, uh, I wrote down that we bought paint and stain for our new fence and that the white azaleas were in full bloom and that the new azaleas that we had put in were beginning to bloom and that I hung the hummingbird feeder. Wednesday, April 27th, two days later, I started painting the fence, the first coat. I planted two dwarf Alberta spruces and I dug up and divided some hostas and moved them around. So those kinds of things. I just keep track of um, what I'm doing in the yard so that the next year I can look back at that same time frame in the garden and kind of get a sense of um, what jobs I should be working on. Also kind of remembering when things got planted. Um, and what the conditions were and things like that. I also have in here uh, weather observations. So like on May 12th of this year, this was 2016, May 12th, it was wet and cold still, I wrote with exclamation points. And I said, I laid out the side yard garden and I need to plant it. So that's the first time that we had done any work over there on that north side. And uh, I had bought all these new plants. And so I put them in place, but I needed to plant them. And then I have a list of ideas for plants here that I wanted to include. And so what I would do is I would take this with me. It fits right in my purse or even just is easy to carry. I'd take it with me to the garden center or anytime I went to a big box store that had a garden center or um, to the nursery. And I would have it with me and I would look at this list of ideas for plants that I wanted and then I would look at their selections and see if there were any there that would fit that wish list. As the year goes in, this is really typical for me. March, April, I really get excited about gardening. May, I'm still into it. June, a little bit, but the hot weather hits in mid-June and it gets humid and it gets buggy. And I really don't like to be in the garden when it's humid. 
So um, you can see almost every single year, my garden journal goes to like late May or mid June or so, and then it's empty and nothing happens. This particular year, the next garden entry was November 10th. So that is so typical for me. It is just my habit. Springtime, I'm hot, really out there all over it. And then June hits and I'm lucky to pay attention to anything until October when the weather cools off really nicely. Okay, and then so in 2017, my first garden journal entry was on January 12th. So look at that. On January 12th of 2017, I planted daffodils out on the front corner hill. Um, and some allium and some lilies. So apparently I had placed some bulb orders in the fall. They came, they sat, and they didn't get planted until January 12th. This gives me hope for this year because I um, ordered a bunch of bulbs last fall. I got some of them planted. I don't have all of them planted yet. Uh, I, so I still have daffodils in the basement kind of cool down there it's like 60 degrees 55 to 60 degrees in the basement but it's not really like outside cool so this year I planted them on the 12th of January and they did come up in the spring and they did work that next season so I'm wondering if I could still it's right now today's January 28th so that's two weeks later but maybe I could get those daffodils out in the ground if I did it this weekend maybe that would work Another thing that I put in my garden journal is dreams for the future. Ideas that I have, things that I saw out and about in other gardens that I think may, might work here. Um, I also used this as just kind of a nice little gratitude journal. So I wrote in things like, uh, I'm really happy with these plants. I'm interested to see what these ones that are coming along in their bloom cycle are gonna look like. Here are some things that I saw in magazines that I wanna try, plants and, and ideas in my garden. So yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a dream journal, it's kind of a diary, it's kind of a, a planning thing, it's a record keeping system. It's really whatever you need. And again, it's nothing special, it's just a, it's just a spiral notebook. It's got all kinds of things. Oh look, this day I got, I got kind of fancy. And I actually, this is, um, this is uh, the courtyard garden over by the driveway. And this shows uh, that I took some watercolor paints and just played around with it. This I must have been on a creative spree that day. You know, you can make it as fun as you want. You can make it as utilitarian as you want. It could be just a bunch of lists like this, or it could be drawings, whatever floats your boat. So this is just the simplest way to keep records in your garden. And if you're in your same garden for year to year to year, this is really helpful. In fact, um, in March, I'll be coming and getting this book and finding out how much mulch did I order to be delivered uh, last year and the year before, and what notes did I take about how far it spread? Do I need to order the same amount, more or less, this season? And I'll have that information based on the notes that I took last year. In the summer of 2017, I put in a four by eight raised bed vegetable garden in the backyard. It was my experiment. I had never had a vegetable garden before. I mean, I had done lettuce, you know, in flower boxes or maybe a tomato in a container, but I'd never really done um, a real raised bed vegetable garden. And so in 2017, I bought this book, which I highly recommend for new vegetable gardeners. It's called the Week by Week Vegetable Gardener's Handbook. I'm not getting paid to tell you this. I'm just letting you know that as a first time gardener, this was so helpful to me that season. And here's why, because it's organized week by week based on um, your average last frost date, which you can find out, but just Google, um, or you know, go to your county extension office, or just, just put in a Google search of um, average last frost date for the city that you live in. And so what it does is week by week, it, uh, so I'll just show you for example, um, so like here's, here's an example. It's usually got at least two, sometimes four, sometimes six uh, pages. So one, two, or three double page spreads per week in the growing season. Um, and what, the way it's organized is it shows you that this is six weeks 
before the average date of the last frost. And then you find out what your average date of last frost is and you put it in there and then you can put the date in here yourself. So no matter where you live, no matter what your last frost date is, this book will work for you because all you have to do is figure out what's your average last frost date and then you know which week you're in based on that. And so it's organized two, four, or six pages per week of tasks to do, plants to plant. If you've got to do indoor sowing in seeds, then you, it tells you that. If it's time to put things outdoors, it's, it tells you that. So, um, and it has so much information here about uh, gardening equipment, uh, preferred methods, um, how to do your soil, how to plant different things, stuff about insect control, um, you know, just all kinds of information. And then it has also a year by year, um, each month, I believe, uh, each four weeks. It has a section where you can put in your notes about the different years. So um, you can keep your records kind of like in my notebook, but this has so much more information about vegetable gardening. This is an awesome resource. I really recommend it. Finally, the other book that I have just found to be so useful for garden journaling or record keeping is this one. It's called The Garden Journal Planner and Log Book. Now, this came as a soft bound um, book, but what I did was to make it easier to use, I actually cut the binding off and then I punched holes and I put it into a three ring binder. Excellent. And actually I put in little um, dividers also because it has so many sections to it. Now I don't use all of these sections, but it's got so many sections to it. It's got a weather log. You could be making observations about your weather in the area over time. Um, the next section here is that it's got a chart where you can record the bloom and harvest times for the plants that you have in your yard. So you just list your plants here and then you make marks on the calendar chart to show when they're in bloom. Now the next section is garden plots. And so these are my hand-drawn garden plots. I did create this on graph paper. I actually got my tape measure out and I made a two scale drawing of my fence and my side porch and my sidewalks and I measured out all the hardscapes. And then I hand drew in the different places that my plants were planted. And I made the list of what the plants are, their names and the date, month and, month and year that they were planted. So I have a few of my garden areas done in that way, but not all of them. The next section is individual plant information. Oh, no. You could create your own personal garden encyclopedia that um, keeps track of all the information of each plant that you have in your yard. The next section of it is plant lists. So this is similar to the plant information sheets that we just talked about, but this is just a simple chart that lists what you have in your plant. And it's organized by annuals, perennials, biennials, shrubs, trees, and let's see what other categories. Hardscaping. So again, so many things here that you could be keeping track of. Then there, Here's a section on pruning. It has a diagram that gives you pruning guidelines, how to make good cuts, how, where to make your cuts. And then it has a pruning, trim, and tidy schedule. All right, now here's a section on plant propagation. Lots of information here that you can read if you're not sure about how to do plant propagation. And then more charts. Yay, I love charts. This is and that's it. So this book, the Garden Planner Journal, Garden Journal Planner and Log Book, very helpful, lots of useful information. And if you're a new gardener, the information in here will guide you as to kind of what kinds of things do they recommend that you pay attention to as you learn how to be a gardener. If you're an intermediate or experienced gardener, then this is going to be a nice resource for you to just um, keep track of your efforts and remind yourself from year to year what you have going on. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I do use my computer so much for gardening, whether it's a plant ID app that's on my phone or whether it is a spreadsheet that I keep on the Google Drive and share with my friends, or if it's a plant database that's published somewhere out there that I can look up plant information. There's so much information online and it's wonderful because so many people share information easily and readily with all of us so we can all learn from each other in community. There's lots of places where gardeners can be um, together online in a sense of community. So look those kinds of things up too. 
So that does it for today's video. How do you keep records about what you do in the garden? Do you have just a Ziploc bag full of all your plant tags? That's one of my methods too that I forgot to mention. Maybe you keep a journal. Maybe you have a specific book that you recommend. Let us know in the comments. Share your ideas in the comments and tell us how do you keep track of your garden. Uh, and if you don't yet keep track of your garden, share in the comments which of these ideas maybe could work for you or a different idea that you have brewing. Let us know. Also, click subscribe right down there and follow along with us as we garden here at Harmony Hills Home and Garden over the course of the coming season. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day, friends.